Welcome to another edition of the Basketball Teacher Podcast. Our mission is to bring you discussions on a wide array of topics in the coaching world to grow players on and off the court. You can connect with us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, and also reach us directly through email at basketballteacherpodcast at gmail.com. Now, here's your host, Coach Mike Hernandez. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you guys so much for joining us here for another episode. Wherever in the world you're listening to us from, whatever platform you guys are listening to us on, as always, thank you guys so much for the support. Thank you for the kind messages. Thank you for all of the questions and and the uh, general ideas that you've had about interview topics that you want to hear, all that great stuff. Keep that stuff coming. Really, really appreciate it. And part of the reason why I'm really happy to talk about this is because I know that some of you wanted to learn more about uh, the travel side of things and, and what it's like to be uh, working with a travel team and coaching a travel team and, and and that sort of area of the basketball coaching world. So I'm really happy to be able to to bring this to you. And we're going to talk about high standards uh, for a travel team, what it means like to run a travel team, coach one, organize everything, but also maintaining those high standards on the court, off the court, uh, talk about parent relationships, because I know those are integral in a in a travel team situation and all that good stuff. So uh, as I was telling my guest, I, I am looking forward to, to learning as well, because this is an area of coaching that I don't have t- tons of experience in. So I, I, I really am looking forward to learning just, just like all of you who are listening. So I am very happy to be joined uh, by a very busy individual. He's a uh, middle school athletic director, which he will talk about and I will ask him about out. He's also a coach uh, with the Upward Stars program as well. Very happy to be joined by Coach Ward Yunt today. Coach, really appreciate you coming on today. How are things? Good, Coach. Man, thank you so much for having me. I uh, was really excited when you reached out. Um, you know, I'm excited. I, I'm excited to talk about travel basketball a little bit. I'm excited to talk about being an athletic director a little bit. Uh, but things are good. You know, we were talking before we came on and it's a busy time for those of us in the basketball world. Yeah, basketball starting full swing ahead, you know, and and so we're busy, uh, but it's exciting. It's an exciting kind of busy. I'm in South Carolina, um, and we get just a little bit of a chill in the air, and it's like, all right, basketball time, right? Like we got below sixty today. It's basketball mm-hmm. season, you know. So we're excited. We're ready <laughs> to chill go. in the air, right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's, that's awesome, Coach. Let's start with. Uh, your basketball journey and your coaching journey and and specifically also what led up to uh your your current affiliation and work with the upward stars that you do right now yeah so i i never had much of a choice about basketball i I grew up with a dad who was a a college coach and then a a high school coach um when i was a kid and he got out of uh full-time coaching and 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 just to be at home a little bit more but but we love basketball in my house you know we played uh, my older sister played i played um we watch basketball on TV all the time. Uh, and so I didn't have much of a choice about it. You know, I, growing up, my dad coached my teams the whole bit and loved playing. I was just an okay player. Um, I'm a lot better in my adult pickup leagues than I was as a high school player. <laughs> um, but I loved the game. And so went to college, changed my major a bunch of times, didn't really know what I wanted to do. I got my first coaching job coaching girls intramurals in college. <laughs> I coached a group of girls at the intramural league in college. And, awesome. um, it was fun. I had a good time with it. And, and then I decided to become a teacher and a coach. And my first paid coaching job was, was coaching fifth and sixth grade boys at a private school where I uh, was in graduate school at the time, getting my master's degree in Mm-hmm. Uh, I always tell people this. It's a funny story. You know, I get these fifth and sixth grade boys, you know, and we're playing and just practicing and, you know, we're figuring it out. You know, they played like a little competitive league with the other private schools. Well, we won the first game of the season and all the kids are going crazy. And I'm, you know, I'm excited. You know, we won. I'm happy for them. I'm like, man, we're really excited, guys. Why are we so excited? One of the kids said, Coach, we've never won the first game before. <laughs> it's all right, you know? Yeah. And, and so I got for, went from there to high school coaching and I coached at several high schools. Um, here in South Carolina. Um, and after my, uh, let's see, second or third year of high school coaching, I think my second year of high school coaching, a buddy of mine from college reached out and said, hey, man, you know, I coach with with Upward Stars. Mm-hmm. And um, we, you know, we're always looking for more coaches. And we'll talk about this a little bit more with Upward, but Upward has a, a, a bunch of different levels kind of to it, you, you know. Um, and so one of our regional teams, kind of like localized teams, needs some coaches. Are you interested? So you know, my wife and I talked about it. I decided to do it. I really had a great time. I got to coach a group of, of juniors that 
Um, most of them ended up going and playing, you know, Division three basketball, a couple of Division two players. We had a, we had a really good time, um, and, and I've just kind of stayed with Upward ever since. I was yeah. still coaching high school at first, um, and then just with a family, uh, we decided, you know, just to do one. You know, I, I was able – luckily, I was lucky and blessed enough to get to coach at Dorman High School, who's a powerhouse here in South Carolina, and okay. won a state championship. We won a state championship there. I was the, the head C team coach and a varsity assistant. We actually um, – we actually qualified for Geico Nationals. Um, and it was COVID year, so it got canceled. Um, so just a really cool opportunity, high school coaching wise. But then I got out of the high school side just to, to do the travel side, and and um, have kind of just stayed with Upward um, Upward Stars for for four or five years now. I guess it's four years, um, but it may be five. I don't know, somewhere in there. Um, and, and they've just been really really good to me. So I've enjoyed the travel side, and I you know it's a, it's a lot different, but I'm yeah. enjoying it. Yeah, no, that's that that's so cool. And as we've kind of talked a little bit about uh, the one of the fun things that and, and we'll talk about it that uh, I, I really think is great about your experience is the ability to really just watch those kids kind of grow up, be with them year after year, right, and see the progression yeah. and the growth of them. Um, I imagine that that is just unbelievably rewarding. Yeah, it really is. You know, when I was a high school coach, you know, you get sort of the same thing, right? You get to see kids grow up a little bit, you know, it was a cool experience for me. Um, my first, yeah. my first group of of C team freshmen at Dorman just graduated um, last year, and, and they were the class of twenty twenty two or I guess twenty twenty three, and which was which was cool. But you know, I, I have um, I have players. It's kind of a cool full circle experience. One of my first players I ever coached on the C team level. Um, is now a student manager at Tennessee for Rick Barnes and just, Oh, wow. Really? Um, yeah. And, and so kind of a cool full circle. He was just, a, he was kind of like me. He was just an okay player, but he was a great, mm -hmm. I mean, just an amazing kid and um, went on, played a couple of years of high school basketball on the sub varsity level and then got into being a manager at a college near the school where he went. And then now he's a student manager at Tennessee. Well, one of our upper stars players, um, Julian Phillips, um, who just got drafted by the bulls last year. Um, but Julian went to Tennessee and uh, every time our director would go up there to see him, you know, my former player, Scott would always say, you know, how's coach you not doing? And, and uh, it's just a cool, you know, just to get to see guys grow up. The basketball connects us in a way that, that we don't always, you know, you don't, everybody didn't get that experience of connection and, and, and watching people grow up that basketball gives us. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, that's such great. And it's, it's so cool to, to kind of just hear you talk and I'm just like, man, I know all the, you have all these stories and all these like just so fun, unique experiences that yeah. you get to have. So um, before we get back to that, I, I, I did want to talk to you about being uh, an athletic director because it's one of those positions, obviously, as a coach that I'm very familiar with, but I've never been in that shoes. And I know that yeah. being in those athletic director shoes is much different than maybe uh, what, what us as coaches or outsiders think. So I wanted to ask you specifically about um, things that you do in your line of work as an athletic director that maybe coaches are not aware of, or they don't really know, or, or maybe they, uh, don't, don't really get a sense of, uh, the way that maybe co us coaches think that, that things are done. Yeah. So I'm, I'm a, uh, I'm a middle school athletic director. I'm a middle school teacher. And mm -hmm. I actually got the middle school teaching job funny enough. Cause I, I got a high school coaching job and in the school district that had the job, they, they had a middle school teaching job. So I took it. And I only coached for a year. Uh, I was telling you about at Dorman before. And um, I've been at, at the school where I'm at now for, for five years. And I've been the athletic director for three. And I didn't really know what I was getting into. The guy who was the athletic director before me got a, a different job over the summer. My principal came to me. I was teaching summer school and said, hey, are you interested in being an athletic director? <laughs> you know, I said, yeah, great. You know, I'd love to. Um, and so I kind of got thrown, um, thrown into the fire. Uh, that first year we we had a the first basketball game of the season we didn't have officials um so I was learning you know um but yeah athletic director is an interesting job because um what, what, what I do most of the time is um behind the scenes you know I tell people all the time that being a middle school athletic director is is a lot of paperwork and it's a lot of putting out fires you know and um so a large part of my job is eligibility and making sure our athletes are eligible and they yeah. have all their paperwork turned in and that, that kind of stuff, uh, which our coaches, I think know that I do, they've come to appreciate that pretty good because 
you know, I'm, I'm constantly communicating with them, you know, so-and-so, mm-hmm. you know, football practice or whatever, so-and-so can't practice. He's not eligible. Yeah. Turn all his paperwork in. Yeah. No, you got to just got to watch, you know? And, um, but I think the thing that probably coaches wouldn't realize is how often athletic directors, at least at my level are involved with in getting those things done involved with the parents. I mean, I've had a lot of parents where I'm standing yeah. in the office with them at the school, basically walking them through how to fill out all of the paperwork how to wow. do all the stuff to, for eligibility. You know, I'm standing here, I'm going, all right, we're going to click here. We're going to, or, or, or FaceTime a kid, FaceTimes their parents. And I'm on FaceTime with their, with their mom or their grandma or their dad. And we're working through how to get all the certain the stuff done, you know, dot the I's and cross the T's um, that they have to do. So, I mean, that's a big part of my job. And then I do stuff like, you know, making sure we have transportation for all the games. You know, mm-hmm. I have some of my coaches that have CDLs, so they drive their own bus we just have to make sure that we have a bus available for them, but I have coaches that don't, you know, and so then we're, we're making yeah. sure we're yeah, working with the transportation that. with the, with the district and making sure they have drivers and all that kind of stuff. I do a lot of that. I, I do referees. So I make sure all of our games get put in the system so that our assigner assigns referees, you know, all that kind of stuff. So much you know logistics, I mean? <laughs> so <laughs> much logistics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, a huge part of my job is logistics. And then the other part of my job is putting out fires, you know, and, and and a lot of times that means dealing with either, you know, a coach or somebody did something they shouldn't have done. Um, or we're dealing with parents, you know, and, and, and parents always want what's best for their kids, you know, and, and that's the thing I, I've dealt with some pretty nice parents. I've dealt with some not very nice parents, but they always want what, what, they think is best for their child, you oh, know, sure. their son or daughter. It's the most important thing to them. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly right. And, you know, but sometimes that comes across not so fun. <laughs> no, no. You know, and, and so I've dealt with parents who are upset with the coach. I've dealt with parents who are upset with uh, players on our team or another team. I, I've dealt with parents who are upset that their kid didn't make the team, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and so that kind of stuff is, is all behind the scenes. You know, a, a, a lot of what happens when the game starts – no matter what sport it is, is not you don't see the athletic director. They're they're not there or they're standing over against the wall. Uh, but a lot of what we do is what happens, you know, from the time the game ends until the next one starts, and just dealing with all those logistic things and those little fires that have to be put out. I had a coach one year, um, my first year as athletic director, mm-hmm. girls basketball coach says, I don't know where my uniforms are. <laughs> season hadn't started yet you know so we don't know where they are from last year well I wasn't AD last year and so I, I spent several days finding uniforms <laughs> yeah and uh search and rescue mission <laughs> yes and I I got bailed out I was looking in the closet for probably the third or fourth time you know you're like I know they're not in here but I'm gonna look again keep going yeah and, and the custodian comes by and she goes are you looking for uniforms I'm like yes ma'am I'm looking for uniforms she said oh they're in here I, I saw them Oh my goodness. Okay. So we found the uniforms, you know, and so just little fires like that have to be put out is a huge part of what I do. And I, and I think I, and I know this like as a coach and, and sometimes though, I, I do forget like how many things get taken care of that I wasn't even aware were like potential issues or potential problems because like our athletic director, our athletic director's like assistant or whatever, like addressed it or took care of it. And maybe it, it was something that like could have been a, could have been a big issue or could have been something I would have had to worry about as a coach, but it was taken care of before I even knew like it was even a thing sort of like all, all that yeah. sort of work I know. Um, and like, like some of the things you were saying about just filling out like paperwork, you know, yeah. something I wouldn't necessarily think of, but like for, for you, you have to, uh, be ready for, um, Kind of pretty much pretty much everything and i feel like right. you, you don't really like every day you don't really exactly know like what that mm-hmm. might bring but you kind of have to either know the answer or find the answer sort of yeah thing. And, and i'm really you know i'm blessed and really lucky because um our school the way our county the county i live in is set up is is there are a bunch of different school districts yeah i um, mean it's like my school district only has one high school and so our high school ad is our kind of like school district ad and, and so he and the, his two kind of people that work with him um, they're great. Like anytime I don't know the answer to something, I can pick up the phone and call and they're like, okay, we're going to do this. Or we don't know how to do this. We're going to find out. We'll get back to you. Uh, which is amazing. Um, but you know, a lot of things that you think are really simple, just require a lot of paperwork, you know, 
And, and so the logistics behind those things is, is, is something I learned a lot about when I became an athletic director, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Coach, let's, let's talk about uh, your, your travel team. And I want to I want to talk about I know it's a buzzword and I know we all use that, but I want to I want to talk about that word word culture and talk about the culture that exists with the uh, travel team that you're associated with. And and what do you what do you think a coach needs to do? Uh, to make sure that that a travel team specifically uh, is working hard, playing the right way, and and being positive, and all the all those great things that we'd want out of a program. Yeah, I mean, I, so a, a little background information for maybe the listeners who aren't as who don't know, right? And so I work with a, a program called Upward Stars. Uh, we're we're based out of South Carolina, mm-hmm. um, and we're sponsored by Adidas. So we play on the what's called the Adidas Three SSB circuit, um, and we have boys teams and we have girls teams that are ninth grade, 10th grade, and 11th. So we have three teams in each kind of uh, on each side, the boys and the girls that are that are Adidas sponsored. We play on the Adidas circuit. Uh, I don't work much with the girls side, um, so I, I'll talk about the boys. Okay. Adidas has a, has about um, 30 to 35 teams, kind of depending on the year, uh, that are kind of all over the country. Um, you know, some places have a lot of shoe sponsored teams, you know, some states might have two or three Nike teams, two or three Adidas teams, two or three Under Armour teams. In South Carolina, we're the only shoe team. Um, and so that's a privilege for us, but that we, we kind of see that as a responsibility as well. Um, and we also have underneath our Adidas teams, we have what we call regional teams. And so we have teams kind of all over South Carolina, a little bit North Carolina, a little bit in Georgia that are like a step down, right? Our okay. Adidas sponsored teams – those kids are going to be division one basketball players. Our, our regional teams are, are typically division two, II, division three NAIA type players. So we have in our program total, I mean, we probably have, you know, h- uh, hundreds of kids. I mean, cause we just have a lot of those regional area type teams that are, that are good and beneficial um, because we're giving a lot of kids opportunities. But our, our, with our with our top teams, you know, culture is huge for us. You know, I, I've had my director say to me before, you know, or or one of our coaches say before, like, you know, he's a good basketball player, he's just not an upward player. Okay. Or he's a he's a good player, he just doesn't fit us, you know. And, and so to establish a good culture, I think the first thing is that you have to know what you're about. Um, and, and what matters to you. And that's the same in, in high school, right? High school coaching, middle school coaching, whatever level, you, you have to know what's important to you, right? What are we trying to do here and, and what's important to us? Well, for us, we have two two primary goals to drive everything we do. Okay. The first one is that our kids get better. So every player that plays for us gets better. Uh, we're, we're not one of those uh, AAU or travel teams that just shows up on the weekend and plays and rolls the ball yeah. out, you know? There are, there are some of those, and that's just not who we are. And um, so we have kids from from all over the state of South Carolina, which South Carolina is not a huge state, but you know, several hours away. Um, when we have a few, we'll have a few North Carolina Georgia players, and so we do practice on the weekends. But every weekend that we're not playing, we practice during travel season. And the second thing for us is that our kids get a free education, go to college, and play basketball. And so when you have those two things in mind at the front. Of, of, of everything you do, it helps you establish good culture um, because we want to win. Nobody coaches and wants to lose. Nobody plays and wants to lose. You know, if we went undefeated next year in the, in the spring and summer on all three of our Adidas teams, it'd be an amazing year, right? Sure. But the goal is all of our players get better and all of our kids are going to go to college on scholarship. And so those two things are, are what sets up everything else that we do because that's what drives us. That's what our most important focus is. So when that, let me talk about how does that message kind of get communicated? How do you uh, kind of establish that message to make sure that players know that this is the expectations for the program and also making sure that the the players and their parents know that yeah. if it's the right fit for them, well, what kind of goes into those sort of conversations? Yeah, well, the the first thing is, like I told you, you know, we're not one of those teams that just rolls the ball out in place. Yep. Um, but we, but sometimes what you'll see on teams is, you know, you play with us, but when we're not playing, like if we don't have a tournament, you just play with whoever you want. You know, do whatever you want to do. 
we don't do that. One of the requirements for us is that if you play on one of our teams, you don't play for anybody else. It, because that that practice matters, right? Uh, we're going to practice when we're not playing. Number two, like we're trying to we're trying to build something here, and, and we're trying to learn how to play together, how to play the right way. We're trying to coach you how to play the right way. So if you're not playing with us, if you're not playing with us, we're practicing. Or if if we're not playing, we're practicing. You're either not doing anything or you're with your high school team, but we don't let our guys play with other teams as well. And and, and to tell you the truth, sometimes that costs us players. Sure. Um, we, we're trying to recruit a player, high school, good high school player, you know, ninth grade, 10th grade, to come play for our program. Another team is, and they're a little bit looser with those hmm. thoughts, and, and the kid goes and plays there, and that's how that goes sometimes. And so, we, but we communicate that up front. You know, that's not like a secret, like, oh, you made our team, guess what? You can't play for anybody else. You know, we don't do that. Uh, and the other thing is, you know, you asked about parents. For us, it's really important that when we recruit a player, you know, sometimes recruiting for AAU at our level is kind of like recruiting college players, right? I mean, we're going to watch them play high school games. We're talking to the kid. We're talking, you know, the whole thing. Well, one of the things that we prioritize, our recruiting director always says, like, we need to make sure we have a contact with the parents, yeah, it's like you're recruiting the whole family, right? We That's we are. Of, yeah, yeah. Exactly right. We're recruiting it, yeah. the whole family. And so, you know, we want the kid, the player to come and play for us. We want him to want to do that. But we also want his family to want that. And it's it's equally important for us that we get to know the family. Because, you know, there are times where you're recruiting a player, the player's really good, really like the player, great, great kid, you know, the whole thing. And then we start getting to know his parents and the parents are maybe starting to make demands of us. This is, if we're going to play, this is what we want. This is yeah, what we yeah, need. The, yeah. And, and we can kind of go, okay, you know, that might not be the best fit. Mm -hmm. You know, our, our director um, has said to me before about a, about a player and a parent said, we don't make promises. We give opportunities. And, and that's really important to us. And so when we recruit from the first time that we, you know, get to know a player, see a player, we like the player, we want to kind of talk to them about coming and playing in our program. We want to make sure we have a contact with the parents as well. And, and then we try to have contact with the high school coach uh, because nobody knows you as a player better than your high school coach does. Sure. Um, you're, he, you know, I tell high school coaches sometimes like we get them for, you know, travel season is, is March, April, May, and, and July. So that's four months there with you the rest of the time, mm -hmm. you know? And so my actual role in the program is, is high school relations coordinator, which is just a kind of a dumb title to mean that I try to <laughs> communicate with and stay with in contact with the high school coaches. Um, and so, you know, we want to know your parents. We want to know your high school coach. And we want to know you. And, and so that helps with the culture because we haven't tried to hide who we are from the beginning. Right. You know, and, and, and we hope that you have it, you know, for trying to get you to play in our program. And then the other thing is like, I think this is important for culture, whether you're an, a travel team, whether you're a high school team, middle school team, doesn't matter is you have to, like you have to believe in what you believe in no matter what. And, and we've had players come play for us for two or three tournaments and leave. Really? It, it, you know, they come and play for us and they quit and they say, I'm not getting what I wanted out of this or, I'm not being used the way I think I should. And, and, you know, a lot of times because players are talented, they're going to end up on another shoe team and, and they'll be okay. You know, like it's not the end of their career or the end of their travel season that they, they find somebody else to play with and that works out for them. Um, but we can't beg you to, and we can't change what we do because you're upset. And, and that's how you maintain culture. You know, I, I think that's the biggest thing is saying like, this is what we're about. We're about family. Like we believe that when you are a part of our program, you're part of our family and, and, and we're going to help take care of you. Uh, we're we're going to help if, with your, with your college recruitment, we're going to help mm -hmm. you get better. We're going to help with all these things, you know, um, but like this is, but, but that requires something, right? You can't play with anybody else. You're going to play the way that, 
we play, you know, those kinds of things. The buy-in sort of thing, yeah. Exactly Buying into right. what we do, right? Exactly right. We're, we're going to offer you a lot, but you got to buy into what we want from you as well. And and that's that's important. That that weeds out, you know, issues from <laughs> before you get there, right. you know. It's like you agreed to 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 be a part of this in the way that we do so, the sort of thing. And then, exactly yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, if, yeah. If you decide that that's not for you, that's okay, you know. Um, we, we I, had, you know, I told you we've had players – stop playing on our teams or quit our teams, you know, but one lives in my area of South Carolina. You know, I see him and his dad, his family. I talk to him. There's no hard feelings about that. I'm not mad. I'm not shunning them. I'm not, you know, it's, it's nothing like that. It just, it, it didn't work out and that's okay. Mm -hmm. You wanted something different than what we provide and, and that that's okay. You know? And so. And what I'm kind of getting out, out of your answer is kind of the idea that as uh, somebody who, who runs or operates a travel team to really clearly have your expectations outlined and be very clear on what they are and know like what your program and what your team stands for so that you can clearly communicate that to other players and parents and make sure that like everyone's on board. It seems really important that you have that down pat what what your goals are and what you stand for as a team. Yeah, absolutely. It does. What 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 you believe in, what you stand for, what your goals are, like you said, those, those are our most important. And when you do that and you stand by that, you treat people fairly, you know, um, then you're going to get buy-in. And, and a lot of times what you'll see is, you know, kids will come in and play for our program and, and, and see, you know, they'll be in our program, you know, one, two, three years, they go on, graduate, go to college, but, but they're often our best spokespeople. Yeah. You know, our, our biggest advocates to say because because they know. Right. And they can speak highly on it. Right. It is, this worked out like like I was told it would. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It, it, and I got out of it what I was told I was going to get out of it. But that, again, goes back to the same thing you're talking about. It's high expectations and it's establishing that this is kind of what we're about. And and, and we stand by that. And, you know, uh, Oprah was, um, you know, existed way before I started and I've just got to be a part of that, you know, and I, and I think that Keep it going, in, yeah. in the last few years that we're, we're taking steps and our programs going in a, in a great direction, in a positive direction, we're getting better, we're growing, uh, but our director, really, we have co-directors and, and those guys, you know, they, they've been with the program from the beginning and, and, and have been around travel basketball for a long time. And so when they got to start upward and then, you know, upward started with a, a Reebok sponsorship and then then Adidas sponsorship after that, like they knew what they wanted, you know? Absolutely. And so because that matters and because that's been the case the whole time, it allows you to continue to hold that standard, you know? And, and yeah. when you, when you can say, and you know, there are teams out there that have, a, have had, you know, more, more professional players than us, more success than us. But when you, you can say, you know, our guys go play division one basketball, we have X amount of guys that are playing overseas, professionally overseas, you know, like it, it kind of shows like what we're doing is working, you know? And so yeah, yeah, yeah. you like, got the, you got the stats to back it up too. Yeah, so. <laughs> exactly. Right. You know, and we just, we just had a, you know, last year we had a player get drafted, um, which was big for us, you know, and the, the thing I thought was cool was like four or five, like both of our directors and like three, three of our other coaches, four of our other coaches were all there at the draft with them. That's really cool. You know, and so it, like that clearly, like he had built relationships with our program that mattered to him enough that that they were there, you know, yeah. when he got drafted, the biggest night of his life. And he wants some of his travel ball coaches to be there. That's unusual. You know, that's oh, not yeah. Yeah, that's, that's not, not regular. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's so cool. Uh, you talked about how, you know, doing things a little bit differently, the high expectations. And of course, you mentioned a couple of times, right, in, in, in the program, that it's not just rolling the ball out on the weekend and, and you're, you're, you're practicing, you're, you're pushing them, you're, you're getting them better. And so I wanted to ask you about what goes into uh, practices and playing on the court the right way, because I know uh, that there are, you know, going to be some of those horror stories on travel teams about guys or girls who are in it for themselves or just not really necessarily playing within a team on a travel team. So I wanted to ask you about how do you make sure that um, the, the practices and, and the play style and just the things that are happening on the court uh, are being done at a high level, but also being done at the right, uh, the right way. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that the biggest thing is that like, like we've talked about, we practice and, and that matters because when you practice, you, you teach good habits in practice, right? You, you reinforce good habits in practice. And so, 
Um, the way we do it uh, is all three of our Adidas sponsored teams practice together. Um, and, and like I said, we have kids from, you know, as much as two and a half or three hours away because we're the only shoe team in, in South Carolina. And so we come in on Saturdays, we practice twice. We practice for a couple hours, take a break for lunch. We practice for another couple hours. And, and every weekend there's a big skill development part of that, right? We're, we're doing skill work. We're, we're mm. trying to get better skill wise, individual wise, that that's hugely important. That's how you, you know, um, work on your game, but then we're going to split our teams up it and we're going to work on like, here's what we do offensively. Here's what we do defensively, you know, and, and we're, you know, I, I, last year, you know, my, my son was born, I have a nine month old son. He was born last year. So I didn't coach one of our teams or assist help assist coaching one of our teams mm-hmm. the year before I did. And we're coaching, you know, um, the best players in our state, you know, and, and kids that are going to be division one players. And we're, we're doing four on four shell in practice. Right. I mean, like, cause that yeah. kind of stuff matters. Like you, you got to know how to play the game of basketball, no matter if you're on a travel team, a high school team, you get to college, you definitely have to. Um, and so we're going to have individual team time where we're learning how to play defense the right way, how to be in help side defense, you know, how are we going to guard the ball screen? How are we going to do these things so that when we get out there and, and play, we're giving ourselves the best chance to win because we we've worked on this. We know how to, how to guard the ball screen. How are we going to guard, you know, post-ups? Are we going to help? Are we going to dig, you know, how are we going to do these different things? And then we've put in an offense. And so we're not just like playing one-on-one every possession. We're not just like every time down a ball screen and that's it. Like we're, we're going to put in some stuff so that we can work to get ourselves the best shots, you know, and every kid that plays for us, uh, pretty much is going to be a division one basketball player. They're all good. Yeah. Um, and they're all talented and, and they all know it, you know, and a lot of them are the best player on their high school team. We'll have some kids that are, you know, go, go to like a basketball powerhouse type school mm-hmm. and they play with a lot of good players all the time. But a lot of our kids just go to regular high school in South Carolina, you know, Right, right. Public they're, school, public cases, yeah. yeah, they're clearly the best player on their high school team. You know, um, they have to learn how to play with other good players. And, and so practice allows us to do that because we work on it together. Like we work on even stuff as simple as like get to two feet, ball fake, you know, attack the paint, make an extra pass to the corner. Like, how you know, you work on those things in practice so that when you're playing on the Adidas circuit and there's 25 college coaches on the sideline and you're playing against, you know, a team that's got three or four top 100 kids on it. Like we give ourselves a chance to compete that way because we do it the right way, you know? Um, And and so, yeah, like our practice, our practices outside of the fact that there are three teams there at the same time look probably really similar to a good high school practice. Um, Yeah. And I, I I didn't even think about the fact that you, you got to practice and get them prepared for like a very competitive potentially high stress, a lot of eyes on them. It's a whole different environment and set of eyes that they're going to be seeing in that sort of situation than maybe in like a, just a traditional like high school game. Exactly. Right. You know, I don't know how familiar you are with how the um, travel circuit recruiting cycle works um, with the NCAA. Essentially the way it works is every year, the NCAA picks somewhere between three and five weekends. And those are what are called live period weekends. Yep. Yep. where division one college coaches can be on the road recruiting. Well, those weekends, Adidas, Nike, Under Armour each have their own event and all the teams that are sponsored by them are required to be there. Mm-hmm. So because of that, your, your, your division one schools all over the country are going to send one assistant to the Nike event, one assistant to the Under Armour event, one assistant to the Adidas event. And the head coach is going to go probably wherever who the most important target is. So when we get into those live period weekends, especially our 17U team, our juniors. So this year that would be the 2025 class. Yep. Like there's there's 20 plus college coaches at every single game. And, and that matters um, because that's why we're all there. You know, yeah, and yeah, that's, that's why like their parents their time, spend the time to shine. Yeah. And, 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 and the whole deal. But it also matters because there are not a lot of those weekends. Yeah, it's a limited deal. Um, and so because there are not a lot of them, I'm about to cough. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. <clears throat> no, but they're def yeah, no, they're definitely limited. You gotta you gotta <clears throat> take advantage of, of that that small window of time where they're where they're there. Yes. And that's and that's the thing. And so 
you you do things the right way, you play the right way, you're a good teammate, you know, um, those things make a difference. You know, everybody there is good. There are there are no players that are playing on on shoe sponsor teams that aren't aren't good basketball players, right? They, they're not all at the same level of good, but they're all talented. Yep. And, and so doing things the right way, knowing how to play the game, um, being a great teammate, those kinds of things matter a lot. And so we want our players to know that before they get there. And so that's why you do things like practice and you work on stuff as a team and you work on how to play defense the right way. Because that's, you know, I mean, in my opinion, and I think our coaches at Upward would would second this. In my opinion, I hope every kid that plays for us gets to college and their college coach knows, goes like, he knows how to play. Oh yeah. I'm sure that's, you know, that's feeling. Yeah. That's yeah. so important. It's like, okay, we did it right. You know, like, yeah, we did it right. Like they know how to play the game, you know, and, and that's huge. And so that's, that's kind of, I think something that is really valuable for us and for our players. Yeah, no, uh, absolutely. And, and the, just that, that idea, you know, just kind of really going, going back to it about like making sure that, those those guys are ready for for their moment when it's going to come right because they, they only got that limited window and then a game you know that goes by really quickly and 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 I, I think it's really good that it seems that y'all are really focused about making sure that your guys are, are getting eyes on them and getting attention on them and so the way that you kind of structure everything is is meant to make sure that they're ready to be at their best when that comes and I think I think that that's that has to be like super helpful to them. Yeah, I think so. You know, I, I joke with with parents sometimes when I'm talking to them about their son coming to play for us. Uh, between our director and our our kind of head of recruiting, director of recruiting, I think they know a coach on every staff in America. You know, I, mm-hmm. uh, and that's that's huge because when we have events coming up, when when Division One college coaches come on the road, we can send out to every staff. Here's our schedule. Here are our players that are recruitable. And like, here's when we're going to be playing, right? Yeah. You're going to have a coach from your staff at this event. Here's when we're going to be playing. Here's when our games are. Here's who our kids are. Here's a highlight tape of them. So you can check it out if you want to check it out and see if you like any of our kids. You know, and then as we get later in their recruitment, we're able to help our and narrow down it with our players on who is recruiting them, right? What What level recruitment they have. And then we can help put them – uh, get put them in front of other places at that level or continue to put them in front of the places who are recruiting them uh, because recruiting can be hard, especially, you know, today. So. Yes. I mean, that, that sounds like a very like detailed system in place. And I think that that kind of goes, goes back to what we kind of talked about earlier about making sure that uh, the coaches, the parents, the players, like everybody's kind of all on the same page of what, what needs to happen. And then, when everyone's bought in that kind of plan can be put in place to make sure that they're going to be put in the right position to be successful. It sounds like it's, 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 everything seems very, very thoughtful and purposeful. Right. And, you know, we talked about at the beginning, what's the most important things, the most important things for us are our players get better and they go to college for free and get get an education playing basketball. And so if you can do that, you know, um, then Look at that. You're, you're, you're making progress, right? Because now we know what we're trying to do. And so we can make sure that that's what's happening. Yeah, no, that, that, that's fantastic. And I wanted to uh, talk about the way that you can get players to kind of, kind of buy into each other. I'm talking more the team aspect about how you can get players to uh, trust each other on the court. Is there stuff that you do kind of off the court? What's kind of that team building process like? Cause I know that individually that the, they're all, they're all bought in and they're all they're, They all are with the message of, of the program, but how do you kind of work on making it a real team where, where they're all in it for each other and, and want the best from each other as well? Yeah. I mean, you, you know, I think it starts with, um, the kinds of players we bring into our program, Mm -hmm. which we've talked about a lot. um, And that matters a a lot, you know? Um, But then after that, it's, it's about doing stuff with them together. You know, like there'll be times when instead of saying in between our two practices on a Saturday, go get lunch. We say, all right, we brought lunch in. 
Uh, everybody's going to get to eat lunch. We're here. We're going to do it together. We're going to hang out. On the road, when we travel to tournaments, um, our kids stay together. They don't stay with their parents. Even if their parents come, they don't stay with their parents in the hotel room. They stay together. Um, and 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 that, that bonds them together. You know, when you spend – eight hours on a charter bus and then you're spending three or four nights in a hotel with, with three or four of your teammates, you know, two, two or three, four in a room, you know, something like that. You're, you're building a connection, yeah. you know, you're, you're starting to like, Hey, I like this guy. You know, he's, he's okay. You know, he's cool with me. You know, I, I like him. I support him. I believe in him. Um, and, and then playing together bonds us, you know, um, sure. whether you're on, on a team together or you just, you know, playing playing hoops with your friends you you bond through through playing together and, and our kids believe in each other's success and there are times that you have to deal with you know i'm not getting enough shots uh you know uh i'm not getting the ball or i'm not that you know and, and you have to you have to work through those things it's conversations it's making sure that we're communicating clearly but but the biggest thing is that when they do stuff together you know last year our last tournament of the year we were done pretty much the live periods were over. We were playing one more tournament and it was in Atlanta. And so, you know, we wanted to, you know, we worked on trying to set up things in Atlanta for our players to do together. Mm-hmm. Um, whatever those things might be, uh, the Martin Luther King museum, you know, just a chance for our players to get to spend time together. that wasn't pra- practicing or playing basketball. I um, mean, and, and that bonds them. And, and the thing that I think is really cool is, you know, like let's say one of our players posts on Instagram that, that they got an offer you know, and I'm clicking through my Instagram stories and I keep seeing the same offer, the same, you know, somebody shared that on their story over and over again. It's just all of our other players. That's really you cool. Know, they're all just happy for each other. Yeah. Happy yeah for they're just other. happy yeah, for yeah, each yeah. other. And, 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 you know, like, or even it's the same thing if it's not an offer, same thing if it's a mixtape, right? Somebody posts a highlight video and all of our kids are sharing it like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it's just because they believe in each other, they care about each other and because they're, they're, they're great kids. But, you know, something else that's important to us is, You want to build a team, right? We've talked a lot about team. We want to play like a team. We want to play the right way. Sure. We want to do these things. But you have to, when you're recruiting, when you're bringing in new players, you know, we, we do a pretty good job retaining from year to year our players, but there's always new additions to the team. Yep. We yeah, want to bring absolutely. in players that fit what we need. We don't want to bring in like, oh, man, this kid's really talented. Well, he plays the same position as three kids that have been in our program for two years. And that doesn't make a lot of sense for us to go recruit somebody who's going to play in front of them or – maybe not play in front of them, but take away their minutes just because that kid might be, might help, you know, might be a little bit quote unquote better or <laughs> different. You say sure. type player just as good. So, yeah. you know, it doesn't make sense if we have a team, let's say we have a team and the three best players on the team last year were starting point guard, the backup point guard and the shooting guard. Well, when we're thinking about what players want to add to that program or that, that team for the next year, we're not looking at point guards. Right, like mm. <laughs> the best players of the team are point guards. We we might try to say how can we improve around those guys. Yeah, and that helps too because then you're not creating internal competition between each other, and and you don't create a you don't create a scenario where the kids feel like every time they go in they have to prove themselves they won't get to play anymore. Right, I right. yeah, it's it's like that idea of like wanting wanting it to be like competitive where they push each other, but also not like trying to feel like they're 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 fighting for their lives out there every time and have to get like that cutthroat sort of sort of situation. Yeah, exactly. And and you have to you have to remind the kids that every game and it, and then if not every single game, every single weekend is a new opportunity. Yeah, the reset you, button sort of you thing. You might have just had a bad weekend last weekend. You might have just been sick. You know, your girlfriend could have broken up with you. I, there's a lot of things that could have happened that make you think like okay, you didn't play great. And so you didn't play great. So this guy played a little more than you did. But when we go back next weekend, you're going to have another opportunity to play. And if you play well, you get to, you'll get to play. You'll get to play maybe a little more than you did last weekend. Yeah. And that's important. Shows a lot and of maturity then, too for a player to yeah. be able to come back, right? After, after mm-hmm. a tough one like that, that, that can mean a lot to coaches to see that. Absolutely. I, I mean, you know how it is, right? When you see a player respond well to adversity, that's mm-hmm. that's huge. Um, and then the other thing is, and I think this is the last thing about helping players buy into each other, but this is, goes to the culture as well. Like two things about travel basketball, like whether you're on a shoe sponsor team or you're on a local team in your city or you're on a team with most of the kids that play on your high school team, 
Like you're probably paying money to be there. Number one. And number two, you're, you're there to try to get exposure. And so like what we never want to happen is have a kid play for us who do- doesn't ever play. Yeah. You want them you know, to be we, out there being seen. Sure. Yeah. You, we're not keeping 15 kids or even really 12 kids on a travel team because you can't play 12 kids or 15 kids in a game. And so we want to make sure that if you play for us, you're, you're playing, you might not, everybody doesn't play the same amount. We don't guarantee that. We don't tell parents that we don't tell kids that, but everybody's going to get a chance to prove themselves to, to play a little bit, to be seen by college coaches. And that is, I think that helps because yeah. there's no, there's none of that like bickering about that kind of stuff or like, okay, I'm going in. I haven't played in three games. If I play bad, I might not play anymore. Yeah. And, and that, cha- yeah, that, that helps yeah. the culture, you know? Yeah. That, yeah. The, well, that situation you just brought up, you know, that, that could, that could tank a team and tank that player, tank that culture. If they, if they start to get in that negative headspace and get worried mm. about that sort of stuff. Right. Exactly. Right. And that's just what you don't want. You know, you, you don't want, uh, we, I mean, like we want all of our players to be successful. Every coach wants all their players to be successful. Um, the key is just making sure they know that, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes, sometimes they don't trust us on that. Sometimes they don't believe that that we're we're we, we're doing what's best for them. Sometimes, but if they yeah. they trust you and, and and they buy into you, I think more often than not, they they know that that what you're doing or what you're telling them is the right thing and that yeah. you mean well by them, right? <laughs> yeah, and that requires that constant communication with them. You know, yeah, same, we we yeah. see our players once a week, but. You know, like our our seventeen U team, the team our our director coaches, they're doing a film session on Zoom in between those practices sometimes. So they're sitting, they're, they're putting a little more FaceTime, and and sometimes it's just as simple as you know talking to a kid, a player, and saying, "Hey, man, you know, I was talking to the coach at whatever university yesterday, and we talked about you for a few minutes." That that just helps them know that that you really do have their best yeah, interest. Yeah, in he's mind. looking out for me. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, that's really awesome, and 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 just just that like. I just think goes goes such a long way because again and and of course you can talk to this the amount of time and the amount of trust that's being invested uh, in, into you uh, to to be taking care of somebody's child or or guiding them on the on the right path basketball wise like it, it's so important to uh, continue to build that trust even after they have that initial buy in it's kind of like maintaining and keeping to grow that relationship so that 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 kid always knows that they're being looked out for and that 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 they're being cared for. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think they have to know that they're valued and cared for, you know, and I, and I tell parents this sometimes. And if we have, you know, if we have listeners that are coaches, maybe high school coaches, they have, they have kids play. They don't know a lot about the, the travel space. You know, I tell parents sometimes like when you're looking for a travel team, you got to find out who cares about your kid. I mean, that's the number one thing who cares about them because like, they got to be cared for and they got to be valued. And then, and then number two, like who's going to help them get in front of the right people to help them get a college scholarship. And, and everybody's not, not the same. Um, and where, what kind of exposure you get, but everybody's not the same, not even in like, okay, this team doesn't ever play in front of college coaches. This team does, but are you playing in front of the right college coaches? Are you playing in front of coaches that are going to recruit you? You know, if you're probably going to be a division, let's say, let's say you're probably going to end up being a division three player or maybe a, a division two player. It doesn't make a lot of sense for you to send the bitch on a team that plays in front of division one coaches every single game. <laughs> no, those, yeah. those guys aren't, aren't recruiting you. That's probably not how good you are. That's okay. You want to go to college for free and get to play basketball. So you need to play for somebody who's going to put you in, in a space that's going to do that. Um, and so that's always what we try to do because like, that's what I would hope somebody did for my son, right. Or, or daughter is that, they, they, they cared about them, valued them, and then gave them the best opportunity to earn a scholarship. That's, that's what I would hope to get. Yeah, absolutely. No matter what level it is, it's such an honor to, to be playing at that level. So the, yeah. the college level, for sure. Uh, let me ask no you, let me ask you about, uh, as we start to, to wrap up here in a little bit, I want to make sure I ask you about how, how is this experience? How, how have you grown uh, as a coach, how have you throughout the years of, of being involved at, at basketball at this high a level, how has it helped you grow as a coach and kind of improve on, on your craft? Yeah. Well, I mean, I get to work around really good people, you know, I, I, I get to coach with good coaches. I get to learn from that. Um, because like we're coaching some of the best players, uh, you get to see, you get to see that at a really high level, you know, and, um, 
and then like we we go you know we go play and there's like I told you there's like 30 to 35 Adidas teams and yeah from all over the country and so you just go watch event you know we're not playing who can I watch that's good or maybe has a good player or you know maybe I just you know know a coach from another program I like him or something you know but you can watch and you can learn you can see what other people are doing um you you can get you can learn from that you know um and, and then our program you know, I told you, I, because we're the only shoe team in, in South Carolina, we, we mm-hmm. feel sort of a, a responsibility there. And so, you know, something that we started last couple of years is we host a, a yearly coaches clinic where we bring in college coaches um, and offer it to coaches in our area, our state. Nice. Um, and, 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 you know, you learn a ton, you know, <laughs> just from getting to have college coaches come in and speak and, and listen that way and, you know, my, my, like I told you, my, my thing is the high school coaches and connecting with them. And so, you know, I just sometimes learn from talking to high school coaches, you know, and um, I, I think I've, I've learned that way. And then you learn how to maximize your time when you practice because you don't practice as much, you know, the high school team practice every day. Um, yeah. When I coached high school, when I coached middle school, we practice every, every day or, or four days a week, you know, until games started. And, and so we practice less. And so you have to maximize your time. And being around people who've done that for longer than I have, you can see the best ways to do that, right? How can we be efficient? How can we uh, communicate and accomplish what we want to accomplish in in, in a shorter time period? And, and are and there so, things are there things that that you that you do now that that you you wouldn't have done when you first started? Uh, yeah, I mean, I I would say probably that I'm more efficient in my time, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, um, we're we're quicker, we're we're moving quicker, we're one thing to the next thing to the next thing, um. The, the other thing I, I've probably learned how to do better is, is talk to kids one-on-one. Um, we have a lot of coaches on our staff, but between our, you know, the different teams and people move around from year to year, but we have a lot of coaches and, and everybody doesn't, everybody's not a head coach and everybody's not a guy who's standing up and yelling uh, kids or, or, or yelling from the sidelines and everybody's yeah, not yeah. a person, you know? And so you got to learn how to, how do I identify one thing that I can talk to this kid about when he comes out? Mm-hmm. And then just say, "Hey, man, when you go back in there, just focus on this thing, you know." And I think that's something I've, I've definitely gotten better at. And then, and then the other thing is, I'd say, coaching with our teams. Generally, you coach better players uh, than I would have, you know, coaching C team basketball, middle school basketball, even varsity at some of the schools I've worked at, you know. And and so you got to learn how to like how to help better players get better. You know, a lot of times what we do is. High school coaches, especially sub varsity high school coaches, we're teaching a lot of basics of the game. Yeah, you know, sure. and we're spending weeks and weeks trying to help guys learn how to, you know, <laughs> how to how to get in help side on defense, or how to box out, or how to, you know, middle school coaches, you're you're teaching them how to shoot a layup off the right foot. You know, mm-hmm. um, with our guys, they're they're really good, they're really talented, and so it's teaching them like different things, intricacies of the game, right? Like you you know how to shoot a layup, you know how to be in help side defense. Like you're super quick, you're a great athlete. Like how can what, what areas can I help you refine? Okay, like we need to work on your stance a little bit defensively. We need to work on like, you know, you're you're not quite as fluid off your left hand in the pull up jumper as you are off your right hand. You you have to learn how to help good players get better, and that that's hard. You know, I I don't know how college coaches do it. That's <laughs> that's hard to do. Yeah. 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 It's it's, it's really interesting i i think the at any level how much time uh is is devoted to working on the on those basics but it's so important and and Mm -hmm. and it's not it's not i think i know as a coach i always have all these ideas of all these more complicated complex things i really want to do but man just just as you said like just things about footwork pivoting the way Mm -hmm. that you you know landing on two feet on a jump stop finishing all, all that sort of stuff it's like it's worth spending that much time on it because I can't, we can't move to something else or do anything beyond that or anything maybe more complicated if they don't feel like a hundred percent comfortable with some of those basic movements like you talked about. Yeah. I mean, it, it, whether you're in the seventh grade or you're a top 100 player in the country as a junior, like you still got to, you're still better if you play off two feet and <laughs> you know, you're still better yeah. if you learn how to like how to position yourself correctly on defense. I mean, you're, you're still better if you do those things. And so, um, I think that's important. Like you said, it, it never goes away that the, the need for the fundamentals of the game and the, and the, the basics um, are always going to help you get better. Absolutely. Uh, 
Last question before I hit the concluding segment. I wanted to make sure I intentionally asked you about advice that you would give to a new coach who is either going to be joining an already existing travel team or maybe starting a, a new one. What would you tell them to maybe be aware of or to think about or, or perhaps to do uh, drawing on the experience that, that you have? Yeah, I think the first thing I would say is if if you're joining a new one, find ways that you can help improve what's already happening. Um, you know, an area that I do a lot of stuff for our program is, is admin stuff. You know, think about that. Like, okay, I'm going to coach with a travel program. I'm going to end up, I'm, I'm going to end up doing a lot of administrative stuff, organization stuff, but I'm, I'm, I'm skilled in that area and our program had a need in that area. And so if you're joining a travel program, no matter what level it is, find ways that you can help improve what's already happening. Um, nobody want nobody wants uh, somebody to come in and start telling everybody what to do, and nobody wants and somebody to come in and not do anything. Those are the two things you you try to avoid, mm. and, and so find ways that you can fit in and improve what's already happening. If you're starting your own travel program, I mean, I would say that the biggest thing would be to make sure you establish what's important to you. A lot of times, people think, "Oh, travel basketball is so different. It's so different. It's so different." And I, and I think the, the culture around travel basketball is is different than high school basketball. But but on the court, um, the, what you do with your team, it doesn't have to be that different. Um, you just decide what you want that to be like. Um, and what you'll find is that the people who believe in that and who see the benefits of that will be a part of your program. The people who won't, who don't believe in that, won't won't be a part of that. But that's okay. You, you know how it is as a high school coach. You want people that – you want players that buy into what you're doing. It's the same thing in travel basketball. So you just decide what you're about as a travel basketball coach in a program and, and trust that people who are supposed to be a part of that and who believe in you and believe in what you believe in will be a part of it. Um, I think that's so big because I do think that there there's this stigma around travel basketball sometimes that it's so different than everything else, but it's the same players yeah, and the same parents. The people, and, and, yeah. and so, so your travel program can be whatever you want it to be like, um, you know, I'm going to, there's a little side note here, but like on the, on the Adidas circuit, we have teams that are like us that have kids from all over their state and practice once a week. We have teams that practice because it's a bigger city. They might practice every night. And then you have teams that maybe don't practice as often uh, or you have from, cause they're pulling from an even bigger area than we are. And there's 30 something teams. There's 30 different ways that people play, <laughs> yeah. you know, but, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. The, but the teams that are really good and where we want to be, and we're not there yet, we're working on it, but the teams that are the best on our circuit every year are the teams that have a culture and, do it right. And so you can do that, whatever level of travel team you have, but you have to believe in that and you have to trust in it, no matter if that means the best player in your program decides to go somewhere else, mm. you yeah. know? Yeah. No, hundred percent. Continue. Uh, no, I, keep going. <laughs> I, I just, no, I think that's the biggest yeah. thing is like, you know, and I told you, we've had players quit our teams before, you know, and that happens. We have to be okay with that. Because if we compromise what we believe in because of a player, oh, then we have to yeah. compromise for the next player. It's, it's everything. Yeah, then it all falls apart. It all crumbles and after it's that. It's even something as silly as, like, one of our things our director believes in is you don't coach your own son. Mm -hmm. We have without, we have current, right now today, NBA players who did not play in our program for that reason. That's fascinating. You have to be okay with that if that's what you believe in. Hmm. You know, but that's part of that's 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 what you believe in, though, and that you don't right. compromise on it, even if that means some players will get away because of that. But that's, that's, exactly. that's what the program stands for. Right. Exactly. And that's, a you know, like not coaching your own kid is, is like a, a silly thing compared to other stuff. But it's like that's just a, an example. That's an easy example to think about. Of mm -hmm. We believe in this. So this is what it is, no matter. Who, who you are. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. And, and just I, I really like those circling back to that that answer about just like get find the identity and, and and believe in it and 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 truly like embrace whatever that 
culture and identity and, and what you want that program to stand for as, as a team. And that way it's, it's crystal clear. It's, it's evident to everyone and, and people can know whether it's the right fit for them or not. Yeah. So I, I mean, that's, my, my, that's great. my personal belief is that playing style can be flexible, but culture can't, right? Like, yeah, that's a good we're right going to play in a way that fits who we have, you know, we like to play two bigs. Well, we're, we have a class, we can't get any bigs to come play for us. Well, we're not going to play two bigs. We're going to play a different way because that fits our team. But the culture doesn't change. Just the playing style changes. The culture can't change. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Right. You can always change the, the plays you run, but you can't be compromising or making switches on the fly to the culture, or the standards of the program. No, yeah, I, I exactly really, right. really well put. Coach, to wrap up, there's a couple of questions I ask every guest. So I'm going to go okay. ahead and start with this first one, which is what is a moment? And I know you've shared so many, but what is a coaching <laughs> moment of yours that you experienced and went through that you think others listening would be able to learn from? Yeah, man, that's good. Um, you know, I saw this question. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think. I, I'm going to think about coaching moment. I'm going to share a teaching moment, if you don't mind. Absolutely. Because um, I think it applies. Um, coaching is teaching. So, yeah, yeah. It's a... I, I teach middle school. I teach seventh grade. Um, and in and, and my school, um, we don't wear hats. Like, it's a school rule. Don't wear hats in the building. Mm -hmm. and, and for a couple of years, I was like the hat king. Like, I was like, take them off, take them off, take them off, take them off, take them off. I had a kid one day. I said, take your hat off. He kept walking, just ignore me. He was in the hallway. So I said it again, ignore me again. So we got into it. I had a bad moment, I had a weak moment. I got into it with a 13 year old. And he said, you know, he said kind of to me, like, why do I have to take my hat off when we're not enforcing all these other rules? Right? Like, there's all these dress code rules. This is the only one we're saying anything about. That hurt a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, mm. Well, I, I kind of knew the kid a little bit, and, I, and maybe I didn't teach him, but I knew him a little bit. And I kind of was like, man, I felt kind of frustrated about it. But I was being a little stubborn. The kid came and sought me out. So I'm sorry. I didn't like how that went. He actually went to his teacher and said, I go talk to Coach Yunt. I, 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 I didn't like that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We talked about it later. Uh, but But I think the thing I learned from that was, number one, um, like you gotta, like you gotta enforce anything the way you're gonna enforce everything. Yeah. But number two was never be so prideful that you can't be willing to have a conversation to learn. Whether that's a player, a parent, your athletic director, your assistant coach, I learned something from a 13 year old in the fact that he was so bothered by the conversation that he sought me out to came and talk to me about it. You know, um, when I should have been the one being the adult. He's the one who came to you, yeah. Well, <laughs> He's the one who's like that. talking to his teacher. He's like, I don't feel, I feel terrible about that, you know. And, and so that's that's really hard. I, I think, um, I think coaching wise, I'd say and this is a shorter story. I know I'm rambling a little bit. Oh, um, no, it's great. Go ahead. Coaching wise, I had a, I had a coach I worked for one time, and, and we didn't always see eye to eye about things. Um, and this isn't one moment as much as just me learning from kind of a season. Um, what I learned over time was that I, I should have made sure that from the outside looking in, you would have never known that we didn't see eye to eye. Mm. And okay, I've been there. That, yeah. what, that wouldn't have been the case. Um, and, and so it's okay if you're an assistant coach to disagree with your head coach. I think that's a totally reasonable thing. I think as a head coach, I hope, you know, if I – run my own program one day, whether it's travel program, high school program, that I'm willing to disagree with my assistants and respect their thoughts and listen to them. But I think as an assistant, the number one thing is that from the, as long as your coach isn't doing something that's endangering anybody, you know, or illegal or something, you just disagree about some stuff. I think it's super important to make sure that people on the outside wouldn't know that you and the coach are not in lockstep. And that, about unified, the program. Uh, that unified front i've seen those exactly. coaches be pitted against each other by players and everything and oh that gets that gets messy yeah and, yeah and and ours was just like a, it wasn't even really about big stuff just some little stuff sure. that we didn't agree about but ultimately we probably weren't as successful as we could have been because of that and probably because not necessarily even the players but people around the school could, could tell maybe that we weren't um, we weren't in lockstep. We weren't. We weren't um, unified. And I, I think as an assistant coach, that's hard because 
we all think we probably know better than, than everybody else, you know, and mm-hmm. so Absolutely. the humility to say like, you know, I disagree here, but you're the head coach. So we're doing it. And, and from the outside looking in, everybody's going to believe that we're hundred percent in that's, I think that's important. Awesome. Appreciate you sharing that coach. And yeah. to wrap up, I give every guest what I call a, a 60 second soapbox, but I'm not going to time you. So if you go over 60 seconds, <laughs> that's perfectly okay. But it's a platform for you to get out kind of a final thought, a final message, a closing idea that you want to leave the listeners with. You can take it any direction you want. So I'm going to give you that floor coach and you're going to take it from here. Okay. That's awesome. I think that's a great way to end. Um, I debated between two things and and here's, here's kind of what I think I landed on. Okay. Um, As coaches, our job is to, to help our players grow as players, but as people. And I think this is me from an athletic director side of things. I think the best way that we can get parents on board to do that with us is to overly communicate. Um, And, and, Overly communicate with the players first and then as necessary with the parents. Um, Even in middle school, we always try to tell our players and parents at meetings, the parent meeting at the beginning of the season, we want your child, son or daughter, to talk to the coach first. Uh, And the way that we can do that as as coaches is that we open up those lines of communication with our players very frequently and often from the beginning. And And I think that too often we don't do that. And then we get upset when the parents won't talk to us about, whatever's going on, right? The kid's not going to play. The kid's not happy. The kid's this. Mm -hmm. And if we create those communication, that communication and that avenue of communication with our players early, then they feel more comfortable coming to us about issues that they're having, whether that's I'm not playing, something's not going on, I'm struggling in the classroom. uh, I feel frustrated about whatever. I feel like you're not treating me this way or that way. We may not ever agree with them when they come to us about those things, but if we give them frequent communication from us, they'll feel better to come talk to us. And I think personally that that will bring down the communication, the issues that we have with parents because we've created safe places for our players to talk to us before there's an issue. And when there's an issue, they feel better to come talk to us. And then you can avoid sometimes, not all the time, but you can avoid some of those difficult, hard conversations that we have to have with parents when everybody's mad. Um, And, you know, this is just a little side tangent off the 60 second rant. (laughs) <laughs> in our in our school, where I'm the athletic director, we make every parent and athlete sign a contract. And one of the things that the parents have to agree to is that they will not talk to the coach after the game. Mm. So if you have an issue, well, you gotta yeah, wait till that. the next day. Yeah. We 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 have a 24 hour rule. I usually tell parents just wait till the next school day. Um, and I tell my coaches, if a parent emails you the night after a game, don't respond till the next day. It gives everybody a chance to calm down. Nobody's quite as mad as they were the night before. Um, But I think if we communicated with our players better early and and we were able to say to our players, you know, sometimes that communication could be great job with this, great job with that. But sometimes that communication could be, hey, man, look, you know, in in practice, I've seen this and this. These are some areas I think you need to improve. Um, Or, hey, you didn't you didn't play as much last night as you wanted to. Here's kind of why I was thinking that if we do that ahead of time, it makes our players feel better about coming to us and saying, coach, can you tell me what what I'm doing wrong? or how I can get more playing time or why am I not playing or whatever that conversation looks like. We have to be the adults and be the ones who start that conversation with them. Awesome. That is that I, I wrote down about four things from what it is you just said. So I, I, I this is great. My notebook's getting full here. So this is, this has been great coach. Uh, really thank you so much for coming on and talking about uh, just, just a high level uh, travel team that, that and, and and everything that goes into it from all, all the culture that we talked about the play style getting getting them seen you as, a, yeah. as an athletic director I have a lot that I'm going to be reflecting on on this and and taking with me with with my my own high school program that I think was applicable so cool. uh, the, fantastic really appreciate you coach keep doing what you're doing uh, good luck with all the uh, behind the scenes administrative work that I don't see as an athletic director and and, and yeah. best of luck going forward with yes that. coach thank you man thank you so much I, I enjoyed this I, I mean I appreciate what you're doing um, we want to grow the game man and, and I think this is really cool so I, I thank you taking your time out for having me on um, and, and I, I'm excited uh, to to listen as, as you have other guests on and, and just get to continue to learn so I appreciate it thank you And thank you so much for everyone for listening. This was another edition of the Basketball Teacher Podcast. We will see you guys next time. Thank you for listening to another edition of the Basketball Teacher Podcast. Make sure to connect with us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, or reach us directly through email 
at basketballteacherpodcast at gmail.com. Take care, be safe, and we'll see you next time.